before I start this video, make sure to use my TCG Player affiliate link down below in the description. Also, if you do want to support the channel even further, consider becoming a patron. There are some great benefits including giveaways, early access to videos, and can be featured in gameplay videos in the future. For today's patron shoutout, I'd like to thank Cleo Robinson for being a patron. You've been a patron since November and I can't thank you enough for your support. And with that out of the way, let's get into this week's video. What's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pub Stomp MTG. And in this video, I wanted to focus on the Mole God. So I'm going to be calling it the Mole God throughout the rest of the video, but it is Anzrag, the Quake Mole. Yeah, I don't know what's with Ravnica having crazy creature types previously. There was that crocodile turtle elk that we discussed previously, and now we have a Mole God. It just feels like we're back in Ikoria with all these strange creature types. So the Mole God does read for two red and a green. It's an 8-4, and it does have the ability whenever it does become blocked, untap each creature you control after this combat phase. There's an additional combat phase. And he does have the activated ability of paying 3, 2 red, and 2 green. It must be blocked each combat this turn if able. So this seriously has some impressive stats. So just looking at this creature at face value, it's 4 mana for an 8-4 body, which obviously is quite impressive. Obviously if one of your opponents decides to challenge the Gruul boss by blocking a creature with it, the Mole God won't be satisfied until he hits your opponents. Honestly, I love the concept of this commander. Of course, it's one of the most Gruul commanders you could see, but what I do like about it, it does take extra combats in a different spin. And what's nice about that activated ability, you only have to activate it once in a turn. Because it does read, it must be blocked each combat this turn if able. So in a funny way, this does act as a pseudo board wipe as long as this doesn't die to combat damage. Your Mole God could keep punching your opponent's creatures in the face. Especially if you do give it indestructible. Because if you do give this indestructible, it'll basically act as a board wipe completely on the board when you keep swinging in with the Mole God. One by one, creatures must block it when you swing in for combat damage until the Mole God is left standing. So honestly, that could be incredibly busted in a lot of different situations. So without further ado, let's get into the deck tech for Ansgraz the Quake Mole. So first of all, I do want to talk about utility cards that focus on creatures' power. There's a lot of different types that you can focus on, and the main reason why I do want to point this out first is because, of course, the Mole God has a power of 8 just for 4 mana. We could get this early on and have some other advantages online. For example, if we do play the Mole God on turn 3 or turn 4, on the next turn we can play Traverse the Outlands. This does read, search your library for up to X basic land cards where X is the greatest power among creatures you control, and you put those cards onto the battle field tab then shuffle. So because the mole god has a power of 8 we could put 8 basic land cards onto the battlefield. Plus again these do curve into each other pretty nicely. The mole god is 4 mana and traverse the outlands is 5 mana. Of course with every commander deck you do need ramp but also you do need card draw. So you can take advantage of card draw spells like Rishkar's Expertise, Return of the Wild Speaker, and Garrick Primal Hunter. So if you do cast one of these we could potentially draw 8 cards if our commander is out on the battlefield. Of course each of them do have different functions, Rishkar's expertise basically cheating something into play with mana value 5, Return of the Wild Speaker can be a great overrun ability, just in case if we need to amplify more damage. And Garrick Primal Hunter obviously making a creature token and also making a lot of worms on the battlefield with his ultimate. But in all honesty, you want to be using his minus 3 ability most of the time. There will also be some situations where you attack with your Mole God and there's a big giant creature on the battlefield that could totally kill it, and you want to get some extra value out of the Mole God. You can use spells like Greater Good or Momentous Fall so that when your commander does attack and before they do deal combat damage to each other, you could then sacrifice it in response to draw a bunch of cards. However, by doing that, you can ensure you could get an extra combat and draw a lot of cards just in that specific scenario. I also did want to throw Life's Legacy because it's essentially the same effect, but just for two mana. Only at sorcery speed though, so you can't really do it compared to the other ones. Probably one of the best cards you can put in this deck though is the Great Henge. So this does cost seven and two green. This spell costs X less to cast where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So let's just first stop there. Let's talk about the Mole God. So of course when we do cast our commander on turn 3, turn 4, on the next turn we could just cast this for 2 green, basically replacing itself because it does tap for 2 green. So obviously this is going to be a staple in the deck because of course this acts as ramp, this also acts as card draw, buffing up our creatures, and gaining life. All in one card by the way. So of course there's some great utility there, but I do also want to focus on giving the Mole God indestructible so that you could essentially do a pseudo board wipe to all the creatures that are on the battlefield that are not 
indestructible. So you can throw in some instant spells like Gaia's Gift, Tyvar's Stand, and also Tamiya's Safekeeping. I like Gaia's Gift especially because it will give it indestructible reach, trample, and hexproof, and put a 1-1 counter on it. And of course we do have an 8 power commander, we do want to be swinging in a lot, and we want to make sure we connect to our opponents while we're connecting to other creatures. We could buff up our commander even more with Tyvar Stand, and honestly I like Tamiya's safekeeping because it says target permanent instead of just target creature, so you could save like a Great Hench for example. Of course you could also throw in Heroic Intervention, this is one of the most versatile protection spells giving all permanence you control indestructible and also hexproof but i did also want to bring in another interesting card in this deck and that's hajar loyal bodyguard so this is just another way to give our commander indestructible by sacrificing it legendary creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain indestructible until the turn so what's nice about that is we do actually have a lot of legendary creatures in this deck and only for two gruel hybrid mana that's not a bad rate especially for being a three three body however one card i did want to mention that i feel like is a must auto include is tyrite Sanctum. Because this is a two color deck, I feel like we're not really going to struggle on color fixing, so I feel like Tyrite Sanctum is perfect in here. You could tap for four colorless, or you could pay two and target legendary creature becomes a god in addition to their other types, and you put a 1 1 counter on it. So our commander is already a god, but if we want to keep using that ability to just keep putting 1 1 counters on our commander, we can do that each turn. But what I would recommend doing as soon as possible is paying into that four ability by tapping it and sacrificing Tyrite Sanctum so that you can put an indestructible counter on it. I will say what's nice about this ability is you could activate it at any time. Say, for example, somebody's trying to remove your commander, but then you decide, I'm just going to tap this and put an indestructible counter on it. You no longer have to worry about the commander going back to the command zone. It'll just stay on the battlefield with an indestructible counter on it. And honestly, the biggest reason why I do like this is the fact that it's just a utility land. It's not like a spell that's taking up space in your deck. It's just a land that you could just slot in. However, the last card I do want to mention in this section of the video is Legolas's Quick Reflexes. So for just one green mana, it does have have split second. It has the ability to untap target creature until in a turn it gains hexproof reach and whenever this creature becomes tapped it deals damage equal to its power up to one target creature. So not only does this work as protection with giving hexproof to our commander, this also heavily synergizes with our commander. When we go into an extra combat with our commander we're going to be untapping our commander then we'll go into that extra combat by tapping swinging away. We could deal damage to a big scary threat on the battlefield so that way we could only focus on swinging into little threats like a Lano war elf compared to a big giant creature so honestly legolas's quick reflexes is going to be an amazing card in the deck but i do want to shift my focus on another topic and i want to focus of course on double strike because of course double strike is another form of protection for our commander because our commander does have a power if we deal double strike damage to a creature we won't really have to worry about our commander dying unless if its power is greater than eight so i do like cards like blood mist i feel like this is an underrated card maybe it should see more play maybe who knows but i like it in my xenagos deck but at the beginning of combat on your turn target creature you control gains double strike until end of turn so we can give that to our commander giving a double strike every combat that we go into but if we do have multiple creatures on the battlefield berserker's onslaught will be incredible for five mana attacking creatures you control have double strike not just one single creature like blood mist this focuses on all creatures we do have on the battlefield getting double strike but i do feel like the best double strike option you could have in your deck is ember cleave so for six mana it is reduced based off of the attacking creatures you control it does have flash and when when it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one as double strike and trample. So this does make me go back to my standard days where I was playing Ember Cleave and also Questing Beast. But I feel like with this commander, I feel like it's extra deadly because of course it'll make it a 9-5 double strike and trample. So yeah, that's pretty nuts. And honestly, you could go for commander lethal damage many times with this synergy. However, I did want to go back to the synergy of focusing on a lot of different powers matters themes, mainly because of course our commander is is huge we want to make sure we could take advantage of it when i saw this card i immediately thought of godzilla king of the monsters or xylortha strength incarnate because the commander does have a power of eight and a toughness of four i feel like godzilla is the perfect combination for him because lethal damage is based off of power instead of toughness so basically our commander will be an 8-8 on the battlefield of course there's some scenarios where that won't apply but in most occasions our commander will be basically an 8-8 another card that synergizes with our commander heavily is nyleth 
of the Dire Hunt. So whenever one or more creatures you control fight or become blocked, you draw a card. Okay, great. With our commander, we're forcing blocks to happen, so we'll draw cards off of that. And it does have the other ability at the beginning of combat on your turn, you may pay two and a hybrid gruel color. If you do double target creature's power until end of turn, that creature must be blocked this combat if able. So instead of paying seven mana for our commander's ability, we only have to pay three at the beginning of combat so that we can make sure that our commander is being blocked. Plus, we'll be able to draw some cards when it does get blocked. Other ways we can increase the power of our commander is by using cards like God Eternal Ronus and the Skull Spore Nexus. God Eternal Ronus is good. Also, it's a god, so that's very notable too. It does have Death Touch and being a 5-5 body. When it enters the battlefield, you double the power of each other creature you control until end of turn. Those creatures also gain Vigilance until end of turn. So this is a great finisher if you do have a big board of creatures, you decide to put this on the battlefield, and then you swing away for a lot of combat damage. The Skull Spore Nexus is a little bit more individualized. If we do have our commander out on the battlefield, this could potentially just cost 2 green mana. Also, whenever one or more creatures we control die, we create a green fungus dinosaur creature token with base power and toughness equal to the total power of those creatures. So for example, if our commander just dies, we'll make an 8-8 dinosaur. Also, we can pay 2 and tap it to double target creature's power until on a turn. I mean, a cool interaction you can do with this, say for example, somebody removes your commander, you could in response double the power of the commander until on a turn, making a 16-4. And when our commander does get removed, we'll make a 16-16 dinosaur creature token on the battlefield. So honestly, that's just stonks. But I'll tell you what, what's really great value is cards like Unnatural Growth, Zapandra Hunger Dominus, and Xenago Scott Revels, one of my favorite commanders out there. And there is some very important wording to these creatures, for example, with Unnatural Growth or Zapandra Hunger Dominus, because they essentially read the same thing. At the beginning of each combat, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until end of turn. So with your commander, if you're swinging away with one of these on the battlefield, you'll make your commander a 16-8. Then you go into that extra combat, you'll make it a 32-16. Then so on and so forth. The same thing can be said for Xenagos God of Revels, even though it's a haste enabler. And on top of that, it's a little different wording compared to the other two. At the beginning of combat on your turn, another target creature you control gains haste and gets plus X plus X until end of turn where X is that creature's power. So if we pump our commander with Xenagos, it'll turn into a 16-12, then into a 32-24, and so on and so forth. As long as you get more extra combats, the more power your commander will get. And so yeah, obviously these cards are probably going to be one of the best cards in the deck for sure for closing out the game because of course with your commander having more power and less creatures on the battlefield, the more you could actually possibly swing in for commander damage. Honestly, just make sure you have a way to give your commander trample so that you could get some extra damage in so that you could definitely close out the game. However, that's going to do it for me guys. Thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on Anzrag, the Quaking Mole. Again, I had a hard time pronouncing that name, so that's why I always referred to the Mole God in this video. But to be quite honest, I think Wizards knows how much I love extra combats, and when they made this commander, I just fell in love with it immediately. I feel like this is going to be a great fit in my Xenagos God of Rebels deck, but as a commander, I feel like it can be very powerful. But let me know down below in the comments, what do you think of this commander? Do you feel like it's a great build around, or do you think it's going to be a card of the 99? Let me know down below in the comments again. I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions about this commander specifically. Also, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And with that out of the way, thank you for stopping by.